Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we have an art journal tutorial. I'm keeping this one simple, but there's some great techniques and composition tips. So let's get started. So I'm using this flamingo napkin that I got from ninniesnapkins.com. There's a coupon code in the description box. Now I'm kind of being lazy, so I cut out portions of the napkin and I'm pulling off the excess two plies, making sure I get both extra plies. Now, the reason I'm cutting it out is I want to play with the composition and this, by being able to manipulate them, it just makes it easier. So now that I know which elements I'm going to use, I'm gluing them down onto actually scrap paper. There's print on the other side, copy paper. And I'm using my fluid matte medium to do that. I'm putting a coat underneath and on top. The occasional wrinkle does happen, but I like that texture. You just have to remember that when you add wet on top of the napkins, the napkins become very fragile and you don't want to rip them. I'm just wrapping my brush with the matte medium in saran wrap because I know I'm going to be gluing something later. Now I'm cutting out the elements. Now there's a lot of fussy cutting here, so I'm not going to bore you with all the cutting. I'm going to turn off the camera and go sit in front of the TV and finish doing all the fussy cutting. So here are all the elements. And what I want to do in my mind, I want to make this heart shaped with the flamingos heads and beaks. Now I ended up cutting off those fronds on the napkin because it just worked better for my composition and that's what you can do. I can play with these, I can stack them, pile them up however I want to. So now that we have the focal image taken care of, I want to put some color onto the background. Now I thought, oh, I have this fluorescent pink or neon pink and quinacridone magenta and light magenta, I believe. And if I mix it with white, I get this. I'm just playing with the colors and I wanna see what goes with the pinks that is in the napkin. And as much as I wanted to use the neon, it really isn't the right color. So I'm just gonna go with the quinacridone magenta, the light magenta, and that now we have these fronds in that napkin so i'm kind of stealing an idea i'm going to get that same effect in my background i'm going to put a coat of paint down mixing the light magenta and quinacridone magenta and gesso on top of the page now this page was gessoed beforehand and you need to be able to do that because we're going to remove the paint through the stencil and that's going to give the impression of these fronds coming through so it's going to be white so i'm kind of well not kind of i am duplicating what the patterning was in the napkin and this is the technique to do that Alternatively, you could have put color down and then stenciled with white. But this is one of my favorite techniques. I just wanted to get these fronds in the background. And I chose to go with pink because some of that pink is around, especially the flowers. And this way it's all going to blend in. You're not going to really see what nap, if there's a little bit of extra napkin. We can, I'm testing this out, I'm liking how it's looking. So when you're doing the removing paint through a stencil, your best success will come if you do section by section by section. Because you want the paint wet for easy removal. If you don't like an area, paint, paint it over and then remove it again. 
I'm not even attempting to get a whole frond here, but I really am liking the effect of this. I'm using a baby wipe and it is a fully wet baby wipe. It's not partially dry. I find that that works really well. Sometimes you have to rub a little harder if you've let it dry. If you do it on raw paper, you will probably not get as much paint off. It's a little bit more difficult to pull up the paint. So now I've put everything back in and there's not much difference in the color of the flamingos and the background. So I wanna knock that background back. I wanna lighten it. And to do that, I am going to give it a wash of gesso. So what I've done here is I've taken my usual gesso sprayed some water in it and I and to thin it out and then I'm washing this over and you're going to see me do one layer of this once I dry the dry this I and put everything back on I still thought it was a little too dark so I gave it another coat so basically we were whitewashing it to soften the color lighten the color and that's so that my focal image stands out more. I don't want everything to be the same intensity of color. So I am using the ruler. I'm just marking where I want to start. And I'm going to tape off a section in the middle where I'm going to do some stenciling. So I'm just using tape. Now I, this is painter's tape and I've stuck it on my sweater, on my sweatpants. So it's not so tacky because I don't want it to lift up the paint. I don't want it to rip the paper. So I'm using this heart background stencil from the crafters workshop. The other one was from TCW as well. I believe it's called Tropical Fronts, but I'll list those in the description box. And then I'm stenciling with black acrylic paint with my makeup sponge. I'm, I wanted to build more contrast into the background the beak of the flamingo is black. So I just wanted to add that more into my overall piece. So I'm adding a few hearts here and there. And then very carefully, I'm heating it up again so I don't remove any paper. a trick I learned and then we're going to reassemble all my focal elements now I'm noticing right here that the strip of hearts is lower than I want I wanted it to be kind of at the top of the back of the flamingo And I'm debating, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to just leave it as it is, or am I going to add more to it? Well, well first, let's just glue down my elements, and we'll see in the final analysis what I'm going to call. If I don't know if I want to do something, I just do something else, and then, you know, delay making that decision. I want the heads to form that heart shaped and I'm skewing my focal image just a little bit to the left, off center. I don't like focal images right smack dab in the middle. It looks better if it's offset to one or one or the other side. 
So I'm just going to make sure I get the heads set. And then I'll worry about gluing everything else down on the flamingo. I'm using gel medium here because this is glued down onto copy paper. This gives it a little bit of texture. It, it's a little bit of dimension. It's off the page, which is a nice addition. And of course, after I glue it down, I do let it dry. So now I'm playing with the positioning of all the flowers. And you can cut the flowers apart more or less depending on what you want. The more they're cut apart, then you have total freedom of how you stack them up again and layer them. The matte medium that I'm using is from TCW and I love it. I'm using the matte finish because I don't want that shine. So you can see, if you go back and look at the beginning at the napkin, it has a very different composition than what I have on this page. And what's on this page, this is a seven by 10, so it's 10 inches across. So I've, by cutting it apart and reassembling it in this way, I've able, I'm in able to use up a larger space. So I've decided I'm gonna add more hearts so I taped it off and just adding a few select hearts, just a little higher. I'll be honest, the heart strip through the middle isn't, didn't turn out exactly how I had planned it, but I think it's still a cute addition. Ended up with a bit of a smudge, a bit of a smear, so I had to go back and clean that up after I turned off the camera. And then I want to edge the paper after I cut off any of this excess little bits. I want to bring out the flowers, make them stand out a little bit more, and I want to introduce a little bit more black. So I'm using the General's Charcoal Pencil and holding it loosely and sketching around the hibiscus. And you can see the difference, the ones that I've done and the ones that I haven't, what that little bit of addition works. And this is one of my favorite things to do when I have a napkin or it's a watercolory effect, this really adds a lot. It just really makes these flowers stand out. Now, sometimes I've painted over the flowers. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to keep this simple. I didn't want to fuss and muss. I didn't want to do my shading. I'm doing it an easy way. darkening the center of the hibiscus. And the texture from the napkin also helps make this look really sketchy and more organic. Love how that made that pop. Darkening the centers a little bit. Now I'm doing the same with the flamingos. 
although I am more carefully just outlining it. I want a little bit of black there just so it stands out from the background. I lighten the background and then with this, it's perfect. Then I want to shade a little bit more or edge the page and I'm just using the General's Charcoal. It's really black and I love that soft effect. And it gives a little bit more than what I had with the makeup sponge. Now here some of this isn't quite glued down so I did go back off camera and glue it down properly and get a nice even edging. Now the thing about the charcoal here is that it will smudge and it will smear. Um, if this was on a canvas, I would have to spray it before I used a brush to varnish it. Then I use my stamps and I'm going to put Love is in the Air. And I typically use my archival ink and stamp out what I'm doing. And that allows me to cut it apart and audition it on the page. So I thought I'd use this Love Stamp. and then my small letter stamps. And again, I'm playing with that composition. I try it one way, I try it another way. I don't like how the script love is looking, so I grab my bigger wood stamps and stamp out the word love just to audition it differently. And then I spread black acrylic paint on my glass plate and I stamp into the black paint and then use the letter stamp and wash it off with the baby wipe right after I stamp. I'm using the black because I want to keep that contrast going. Basically this is pink, white, and black. That's it, right? Still not sure where I want to put the letters. Make a decision and So mix and match different letters, different sizes of letters. I'll put a link to any of the wooden letter stamps that I can find in Amazon. I know Nicole has some at Nini's napkins too, some of the um, clear stamps that you could, letter stamps you could use. Then I decide I want to stencil in some hearts. This is just a dollar store I think stencil that I've had forever I'm putting a big heart in the corner and then the little heart on the side so it's just a little bit of a frame there I was going to put it right across the top but I thought that would be too much once that's dry I grab my white Posca pen and do some doodling on it Add some highlights to my flamingos. And there we have it. So I hope everybody has a happy Valentine's Day. I hope you will find a technique or several techniques or tips in this video and go and use it in your art. Until next time, go get creative.